Righto, hello. Um, I've done another picture. <laughs> uh, this one is uh, by a pilot by the name of Neeple. And I've followed him for ages because he does mostly exploring as far as I can make out. And he does the most amazing screenshots. And this one is of a neutron star and black hole. And it is pointed out to me by Sally Morgan Moore, which was kind of funny. But I've asked him before if he fancies a picture and I think he said, oh, I'll go and have a little look. And then obviously, you know, life gets in the way and you forget about these things. But I've certainly always wanted to draw one of these pictures and I don't like to bother people too much. But uh, sometimes you look at those pictures and think, oh, I want to do that one. It's like somebody puts cakes on the table. I can really fancy one of them. <laughs> anyway, so these are uh, apparently the 3.3 light seconds apart. And they go around each other every four hours. And uh, the neutron star goes around the black hole, I would imagine, every four hours. Or maybe there's some sort of barycentra business going on. I don't know. Anyway, he says that the uh, the singularity of the black hole is 4.425 solar masses, which is quite large, isn't it, really? And the mass exclusion zone, uh, you drop at 30.4k. Um, I not sure that sounds really close doesn't it i don't know I, I i'm a bit of a wuss with black holes i find them quite nerve-wracking anyway but yeah the neutron star i like a neutron star they're actually a lot more relaxing to scoop from than they look although sometimes you find those those really fast ones that go and they're like, like oh they're cool aren't they so impressive but I, they're not significantly hard to scoop from than the normal ones are they there's four pictures he took of this actually uh the one that i was given to draw was uh, a really nice broad shot with a lot of it in but there's a nice close-up I, I actually liked as well where you've got only a bit of the neutron star in but you've got a nice kind of overlapping light rays coming from the diffusion of the black hole or the neutron light being refracted by it or whatever i don't know but yeah it looks good the lensing effect, I suppose that's what it is, isn't it? Anyway, yeah, the um, the neutron star is such a cool introduction to the game. I liked it. I remember when they made white dwarfs look amazing, and then that that was good because I was living in the bubble mostly all the time at that point, doing background sim and stuff. And I uh, lived in the system next door to um, a white dwarf, and oh, they're evil, but I, I really I thought that they looked beautiful. And they, they still do look beautiful because of that that amazing point of light that you get with the white dwarf. But neutrons are glorious things, aren't they, really? There's a, a particularly good system I went to. I think everyone's been there that goes anywhere uh, called uh, the World of Death. Uh, I found it in EDSM, but um, it's a well-known system anyway, so you'd probably find it anywhere. But yeah, the, uh, the neutron star has an orbiting planet that goes within the jet cone of the neutron which is so impressive. And I, 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 you can land on it, but I, I sort of hovered and hovered and hovered and, and was stout, I think. I think there was a plan that I was going to, but I never did in the end. I think, I think we thought that actually that probably I had a lot of data <laughs> and my data, my beautiful data. I think next time I go to Colonia, I will probably use uh, the Neutron Highway. I've avoided it in the past because I've been exploring. So although I'm happy to use a Neutron to get myself where I want to go, quicker because I normally plot myself little attractive waypoints in nebulas. Mostly I'm not interested in going on the Neutron Highway because everything around it has pretty much been discovered. Anyway so um, as you can see I've been uh, colouring in and I'm just starting to try and finish it up putting in some highlights and, and, and trying to make the clouds look a bit more diffuse and I was trying to make it look a more purpley blue and, and yet the um, the neutron more greenish blue and I'm not sure that I did actually manage that I quite like those bold stripes of color you get either either side of the jet cone that always looks good this is a very light blue chalk pencil and uh, a greenish chalk that I've I'm sort of using a bit of both to try so it's turquoise not green really anyway so basically it's about making the contrast bold enough so that it looks shocking if you can whilst keeping the the reflected light from the lens of the black hole a little bit uh, more subtle, if you can. Because it was quite quite an impressive sort of shapes and overcrossing lines that he managed to do. I like his engine trails, to be honest. They're cool. I recently bought myself my first engine colour. I, I haven't never done it before. I've always avoided it. But I, it was so cute. <laughs> I don't think I think I got I got bulb blue in the end um, hyperlink blue 
I thought they looked quite nice. Uh, I think this is pretty much done. I think when I start putting the stars on, that means it's done. Anyway, so there's not a great deal more to say. As you can see, I really enjoy doing things with cloudy kind of patterned sort of whirls of chalk. I think they're really rewarding and you, you do them relatively quickly actually as well. So that it's, it's, it's a nice, restful, relaxing one to do actually. All right. Anyway, thank you for watching and thank you if you have previously sent me pictures to draw because I always enjoy them. And I just can't take that many good screenshots, to be honest. Everyone else seems to take such beautiful ones. So if you do like the pictures and you've got a screenshot that's burning a hole in your hard drive, just, just give me a shout. I, I would happily do it. Anyway, thanks. Bye.